Hi there. Today, let's unravel the subtle differences between delighted, pleased and ecstatic and how different synonyms for happy, H-A-P-P-Y, can enrich your English conversation. Imagine being able to express happiness in eight different ways. That's what you're about to learn. This podcast will help make your English more expressive and engaging. Welcome to our 700th podcast. That's right, 700. It's a milestone that reminds us of our journey together in mastering English. And just a reminder that you can see the latest 75 podcasts on our website at adeptenglish.com. And if you would like access to even earlier podcasts, you can download them from our courses page on the website. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Anyway, let's celebrate the 700th podcast by going back to our main purpose, helping you speak English fluently and confidently. Sometimes this means focusing on those tricky bits of grammar that need extra attention. Some aspects of English are challenging, so I keep returning to them so that you can keep learning. One of these is synonyms. That's S-Y-N-O-N-Y-M. Synonym. And synonyms are different words with the same or similar meaning. So today, synonyms for happy. And I'll drop in lots of other vocabulary for you to learn and stories and connections, which will help it all stick in your mind. The English language has a lot of words, more than most languages. And while that can make English seem difficult to learn, what it also means is that English is a wonderfully descriptive language. Knowing the right word to use can transform a simple sentence into something more vivid and memorable. While synonyms mean broadly the same thing, there are subtle differences in their use, their meaning. So every so often I do a podcast on synonyms to explain these, the differences between different synonyms. In the past, I've covered synonyms for big in podcast 598 or excited in podcast 610. And previously, I've done podcasts on words like thin or fat explaining the more subtle meanings so that you can use them knowing fully whether they're likely to offend or not. So today's synonyms for the adjective happy. I'm sure that's a word you know, but let's make your English more interesting. Let's start with delighted. Imagine receiving fantastic news and feeling a surge of joy. That's feeling delighted. It's a burst of happiness. That's D-E-L-I-G-H-T-E-D from the verb to delight. And there's also conveniently a noun, delight too. This one also appeared in podcast 610. It's nice to have an overlap so that you feel that your learning with Adept English is comprehensive. Notice the silent G-H too in that word delighted. Delight is an uncountable noun, as though delight is a substance. And in fact, when we talk about Turkish delight, that is a substance. Pink, rose-flavoured usually, and sweet. But back to delighted. If someone is delighted with something, it tends to mean they've had good news or a positive experience. It's an excited form of happiness. Hence why this word also appeared in podcast 610. If someone is delighted, it means they're lit up by their delight. My friend was delighted to find out that her sister was having a baby. My uncle was delighted to hear that my nephew had passed his exams. I was delighted with my new set of pans. So yes, you could feel delight over a set of pans. So we use it for relatively short-lived happiness. A more informal word is chuffed. That's C-H-U-F-F-E-D. It's like the proud feeling you get when you achieve something significant, passing a test or getting that dream job. 
As far as I'm aware, there is no verb to chuff, just the word chuffed. If someone says to you, oh, I'm really chuffed, it means I'm happy because I've had good news or something positive has happened. You might also hear, I'm chuffed to bits. That means really chuffed. I got a new job or my cat's had kittens. So some news has happened to make you feel chuffed. I'm chuffed to bits with my new phone. It's so much better than my old one. Now, another expression, another adjective you may hear, which means the same as chuffed, is thrilled. This comes from the verb to thrill, T-H-R-I-L-L. And to feel thrilled, or the noun thrill, thrilled conjures up images of exhilaration, like the excitement of a roller coaster ride. Your stomach lurches, your heart races, you feel thrilled. That's its purer meaning. But like often happens, this word gets used to mean something slightly different. And it's happy in an excited way. I'm thrilled at the news. The British royal family, at least some members, might say chuffed privately when they hear good news. But in a public statement, they would always say thrilled. This is the kind of thing that people say when someone gets engaged or married or a new baby is born. It's a bit like delighted then. It's a short term happiness because you've received good news. And the difference between chuffed and thrilled? Well, in British society, the posher you are, the more likely you'll say thrilled. And the more working class you are, the more likely you are to say chuffed. As we move through these words, notice how each one brings a different energy. A more moderate and universal synonym for this type of reactive happiness would be the word pleased. I'm pleased with my new set of pans or I'm pleased with my new car would mean that you're generally happy with your purchase, but you're perhaps not as excited about them as if you said delighted. You'll be familiar with the word please, P-L-E-A-S-E, as something English speakers, particularly British English speakers, say all the time. It's part of our manners. You say please when you ask for something and thank you when you get it. The verb to please means to give pleasure, to give satisfaction. So if you're pleased with something, you're satisfied. It gives you pleasure. To be pleased is a more moderate, short-term feeling of being happy in reaction to something specific. If someone is more generally happy in their life, say they've got to the stage in life where they have a nice place to live, they enjoy their job, they've got a nice partner and family and enough money, we might say that they were contented. C-O-N-T-E-N-T-E-D. And in fact, content and contented mean roughly the same. There's a noun, contentment, C-O-N. T-E-N-T-M-E-N-T. -E -E and if you experience contentment, again, you're satisfied. Life is good. If you're contented, it's a more long lasting feeling than delight. You're generally happy with your situation in life. That's to be content or contented. If we're talking about excitement and being happy, then a good word to use, particularly if someone has had good news or an experience which is joyful, Another synonym of happy is elated. It means full of joy, E-L-A-T-E-D, on a high after good news or an experience. Elated is a, an even higher level of happiness. If someone is elated, they've really been lifted up by something. They're in a super happy place. And the implied meaning here is always that this is in reaction to something. Being elated doesn't just happen in a vacuum. It relates to something. Another word for happy, which is probably the highest, the most extreme word for happy that I can think of. It means very, very, very happy. That's ecstatic. That's E-C-S-T-A-T-I-C, -E -S -S ecstatic. And the noun to go with this is ecstasy. That's E-C-S-T-A-S-Y. That's the word for the feeling. This is the most extreme form of feeling happy. So with this word comes the feeling that something else is going on for the person to feel this extremely happy. 
It has religious association sometimes, this word. You might be ecstatic if you're a mystic or in a prophetic trance. There's a sense of being beyond reason or control. And in fact, one of the street names for the drug MDMA in English is ecstasy. This is a drug, interestingly, which massively raises your serotonin level. So people experience a feeling of closeness and intimacy with others that they don't normally have. And in fact, this drug MDMA is being trialled for the treatment of trauma and PTSD. This is really interesting research, though I think the experience of traumatised people on MDMA is actually anything but ecstatic. But it looks as though it will be a very effective treatment. MDMA is still illegal in most countries, of course. So that word is ecstatic. Lastly, let's end on an adjective for happy, which is very, very British. You've heard of the stiff upper lip, haven't you? That phrase implies a state of mind where you put up with a lot, a lot of adversity or negatives, and yet you remain positive. And so this final word is cheerful. Cheerful, C-H-E-E-R-F-U-L, is the adjective we use of the person who's happy, even when things aren't going that well. There's also a noun, cheer, C-H-E-E-R. Not much use that noun anymore. You might hear something like Christmas cheer, but it's quite old fashioned. There is also a verb to cheer. If your son is about to score his first goal in a football match, you'll probably shout and cheer in delight. Or we might say, if your daughter's in a race, you cheered her on. Back to cheerful, it means remaining positive, bright, pleasant, upbeat, if you like, particularly in the face of something negative. That's subtly implied. If you imagine doing a spot of winter hiking or hill walking in the UK, you and your friends might find yourselves walking head down because there's a strong wind, it's going dark and it's sleeting. In this sort of scenario, a very British thing to do would be to remain cheerful by singing some songs. If you celebrate Christmas and it's wintry outside, then you might decorate your house for Christmas and you'll want to make it cheerful. So this adjective can be used of a room or a place as well as the feeling of a person. Light a nice fire, put up your Christmas tree, put up your Christmas lights and mull some wine. That will help you feel cheerful. As we wrap up, I encourage you to reflect on these synonyms for happy. Remember, the beauty of English lies in its variety. So just to recap, I covered the following synonyms for happy. Delighted, chuffed, thrilled, pleased, contented, elated, ecstatic and cheerful. And remember that self-explanation study technique, which I explained in the last podcast, 699? Well, you could use this with this podcast. Listen to the podcast a number of times and then test yourself on how well you've remembered the differences in meaning between these synonyms for happy. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.